Hello everyone, and welcome to a new game that I found while scrolling through sales. This is Thomas Was Alone. I have no idea what this game is about, but it looked interesting. All I know is that you're a square, or a rectangle, you're a shape. And, going off of what the title is, you're alone, I guess. So first, let's see if there's any commentary. Voiceover, I'd assume. Why is this a... weird? Well, let's start a new game and. Hello, I'm Mike Biffle, and I made well this this game. Uh, Thomas was alone. Thank you uh, for buying a copy. That's very kind of you. Um, unless you pirated it, in which case, please go and buy a copy. Um, it's in sales quite regularly. With people. It's weird speaking to you from the past. So, uh, this is Thomas. Uh, he is, well, he was named originally by the community. Um, the game's name, Thomas Was Alone, was, uh, it was arrived upon by a friend of mine who sarcastically suggested I should call the game Thomas Was Alone because that's emo and uh, emos would like it and emos post links. Which was sarcastic and, and lame in a, in a weird way, but also actually weirdly right. We found that people were associating the red rectangle at the start of the game with the name Thomas. So giving giving the game that name immediately started the story going, and and that happened in lots of ways throughout the game. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, so it looks like I want to turn up the commentary because I had to turn up my headphones really high. <laughs> I do enjoy this music though. It's rather nice. So this this is step one, side to side movement. Um, if you're a platforming game fan, it should not present too much of a challenge to you. But here it's really just about easing the player into the way the world works. Seeing gravity for the first time, understanding how falling feels. And then actually kind of talking about that in the, in the voiceover to kind of have a bit of fun with it. It's also introducing uh, the idea of a narrated story and it's introducing Thomas. So we hopefully kind of do quite a few things here at the same time. It also does the job of setting up Thomas as an inquisitive character. Uh, this is really important, and uh, he becomes inquisitive, he becomes more and more interested by the world and tries to make assumptions about it, and that's that's kind of what his character is all about, at least at the start. All right. Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. One. The whole alone thing. Two. Portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three. Falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. I almost just want to not talk. <laughs> I mean, of course I don't want to talk when he's talking, but... I almost just don't want to talk for this entire thing. I don't know how long this is going to be. Jumping um, had to be right. It's it's kind of the main way you interact in this game, obviously. I did a lot of research. I got kind of obsessive about it. It took me... I was still fiddling with the jump physics, I think, about three weeks before I launched the game. So it's something that just got fiddled with and fiddled with and fiddled with. It had to feel right. Um, and, yeah, it's it, there's one problem here, actually. I have an idea. We turn commentary off like how it normally is, and then we redo the game. Because commentary and voiceover seem to not like each other. Or so one could say. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to. What's the word? jump. It worked! Thomas had solved the great inverted fall mystery. <laughs> I'm loving this game. Oh wait, we're not even at level one yet. A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. Oh, 
I made it. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. I'm gonna go here. Oh, that this kills me. Seemed a little dangerous. The world. Oh, so I just die this in there. All seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was Whoop. unstable. And it seemed yep. to Thomas that it could Achievement, Mr. Down. Lonely. Find both trophy pickups in spawn. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable. And it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. He was starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. <sighs> Paranoia. <laughs> okay. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might or might not be important. Okay, so for anyone that wonders why I stop moving whenever I see dialogue, it's because typically whenever I see whenever I'm at dialogue and I keep moving, it skips the dialogue because it can't keep up with itself. Which sucks. Oh, some games handle it differently, it's just it might normally have been paranoia again. But Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No. Too obvious. This reminds me of that Yandere game. The one you can play on mobile. I think Mark did it. So, people might know. Or at least they should. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. So it's bad. He made another mental note. Four. Water. Not good. To be avoided. So is this a respawn point? I feel like I was restricted from jumping there. Also, that looks like fish chunks. Not chunks. Fish food. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. Let's see what we got to work with. Ah! This reminds me of N+. Plus. What was N++? Plus plus? No, N+, plus was the one I had on Xbox 360. N++ plus plus is the one I have on Xbox. Series. And Xbox One. I really thought it'd be one. New theory. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Dang it. Why are these like...
Okay, so if I press it beforehand, it'll make me jump the moment I touch the ground. That's actually good to know. Overlapping scripts, more than one AI was bound to be spawned into an environment at some point. Turns out you missed that the point. Turns out I missed the point. I didn't read it all. Chris. Let's read it after I get to it in the stream. <laughs> Or at least what I see. It's taken a while. Also, my voice is dying. Alright, let's read it. That little error changed everything. Took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? <laughs> I don't click it, I really have to... This is the first game I've seen actually use the touchpad. Wait, can I push it? No, I cannot push Thomas. Okay, so... Christopher, I think that's what it... Yeah, Christopher is the little on the bigger side. Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Actually, not technically graceful, it's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. Okay, so like I thought, doesn't work. Ow! My face. We're gonna get a triangle at some point. Jump. Wait, can I move off? I can! Okay, this was more like it. The glowy white... thing. Only Chris could get to it. Which, of course, made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? <laughs> oh, it looks like I can just click. Oh, I can just touch it. to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. This game's fun. <laughs> Was this good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. Friend. I guess.
Can Chris... Okay, can... Can Chris do these jumps? Surprisingly? Yes. Oh, dang. Three jumps for Thomas. Glad I can just pretend. Chris stared at Thomas with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up. If only for a few levels. You know, I could easily do How how far can Thomas jump? Okay, that didn't work. Okay, Chris, I'm gonna have you move. Running, jump, and go! Yeah, like I thought that actually works. No! Okay, so it looks like I need Chris over there. That doesn't come over here, but I might be able to make it. Okay, Thomas can make it. Wait. Oh, wait. I thought maybe Thomas had to go around. No. 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 <laughs> no. No. Okay, never mind. I got it. Larry? John knew. John. He knew that this was his chance. A moment to shine. This was game day. <laughs> okay, so I need you over here. Okay, weird. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. <laughs> he can't Where see they come from anyway. The stories. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he practiced in the mirror all these years.
This game seems cute. <laughs> Oh. Oh, wait. <laughs> I can't. Hmm. I have to restart. I didn't know I'd have to have them go together. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he practiced in the mirror all these years. Okay, so Thomas has to jump over, I got it. Can Chris jump this? He can. Wait. That's not tall enough. So Chris is fine, I need John. to use a touchpad for this. But I guess it makes more sense than using like the bumpers. John was happy to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. Wait, Chris, I need to move. I know Chris can't jump on top of Tom, so I need to do this. Okay, so apparently I need to do something more to the effect of... Stop blocking John. Get Thomas above and to the side. Chris, jump off Thomas. That way Christopher can jump up. Wait, Christopher got it, yeah. Okay, Christopher cannot make it up here. What do I need to do? So much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. I did not expect a game about shapes to be this cute. Whoop. 
no. Thomas, please. Okay, muscles are not enough for that. Hmm. Wait, no, I did this backwards. I need to get Thomas to get off. Chris jumps off, Thomas to get up here, then Thomas follows suit so Chris can keep jumping. Less immediately likable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting news jump. So John is kind of like a happy-go-lucky guy, I think? would require coordination, balance, and timing. Where's Chris? John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. Ah, wait. Christopher can't do this. Can Christopher jump on John's head and cheese it? No, he cannot. Can I cheese the end? Yes, I can. All's fair in love and war. Maybe that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. To keep them? We're his? The initial group possessed similar variations in size and strength, more complex configurations were inevitable. As the era spread, these variations became increasingly extreme. There's a big boy. This was how Claire would die. She knew it would happen eventually. Oh, dang. Rubbish at jumping. And she moved slowly. She felt a little like her continued existence was breaking some kind of natural order. The crumbling pillar was a dramatic death, she supposed. Wait, what? Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she was not, in fact, dead. It was at that moment that Claire realized she had superpowers. So Claire is immune to this stuff being able to become a platform. She'd need a cape. There was no getting around that. You couldn't be a superhero without a cape. Can you imagine. Confusion. If you saw a cape, that made matters clear. You knew what you were dealing with. Claire was all about communication. And, you know, floating in water. Which was her superpower. I was wondering what I was supposed to do. I can just... Trapped.
Oh, we have Claire. All right. Fear not, my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you. Well, let's get Claire, Claire closer. Claire up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Claire was rubbish. Thomas, stop it. I wonder if there's going to be any more. Claire arrived just in time. Claire <laughs> arrived just in time. Which was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. began to rise, Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. Claire wondered if Thomas would make a good sidekick. Hold up. I'm not letting me I'm not letting you pass. Claire me. arrived just in time. Which was of course the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. Oh, it is constantly rising. As the water began to rise, Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. Oh yeah, I can die and it'd be fine. Right, 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 right. Claire arrived just in time. It was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. Now I can just focus on the level. Cause I already got the trophy, I think it's called. began to rise, Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. Claire wondered if Thomas would make a good sidekick. Or was she more the Lone Avenger type? She'd like that. The sole hero in a world of rectangles and conveniently placed pools of toxic water. Ah, oh, whales on the right one. They both need to get up. Ah, right. I forgot Chris. Can he jump up this? He can! The others told Claire that staircases were a bit of a fixture here. Wondered why the world made it so difficult. Wait, <laughs> right, need to move you so I can move you so I can put you back so I can bring Chris up so I can move Claire a little so I can move Chris and then I can do this.
Oh. Is there a way to figure out? Nope. Looks like I just want to know how long the game is. Probably needed a nemesis. A villain who would show their true colors at the worst possible moment, hurting all she held dear. Chris was the most obvious choice. He seemed stroppy enough. His jump was so pathetic that it conveniently avoided Claire's insecurities. Yes. Chris. Diabolical Chris. The fiendish Christopher. I'm quite sure this is not what I'm supposed to do, but I don't really care. Him saying that reminded me of Tai Lung in the Kung Fu Panda movie. Our battle will be legendary. You know that. Where has Chris gone? Was he gone somewhere? Plotting Claire's downfall? If Claire was honest, and she had to be because she was a superhero, this was a troubling turn of events. Still, there were reasonably sized bodies of water to cross. You know, for someone, for a game about someone being alone, there's a lot of quote-unquote people. Not that I'm against it. senses told her that there were multiple paths across with various possible configurations of the little posse. doing really well. Claire hoped she could get them all across. John was fully aware he could do this alone. Thomas hoped he'd never have to. Oh dang, I can't do this as Thomas. Thomas was alone is the name of the game. It's 
spikes. Death, yep. Claire was alone. Which was odd. Because she wasn't meant to be alone. She needed to be where there were rectangles to save. Being the only superhero in a given space kind of defeats the object. Spikes? That was new. Golden Fleece. Claire avoided that. Right. She decided they were most likely her kryptonite. Not the rubbish red kryptonite either, the proper radioactive green stuff. What's the red kryptonite do? Make him mad? was here. Claire felt something had gone wrong. There was a disturbance in the force. And something had altered the matrix. The world was reacting to their progress. It was amassing its forces. It was plotting against them. Claire finally had a nemesis. The world, Dio? <laughs> Why am I doing worse now? Oh right, I didn't jump. Can't believe I forgot that part. square doesn't seem I built protections into the system when overlaps occurred the world generated a splitter to remove the unwanted additionals it's like a white blood cell it investigates it captures and it removes from play wait that is Laura this isn't Thomas this Laura the wall. maybe he'd never know what she could do Maybe, maybe, they could just have a conversation, hang out. As long as he didn't find out what she could do, which would never happen so long as they stayed separate. Oh, it's gonna stay separate. Both bad at jumping, they probably work well together. Laura didn't have time to worry about the ominous pixel cloud. It had been following her for some time and it had kept itself to itself until now. Ominous More pixel cloud? Was the little orange thing, which was looking at her in a way that she kind of, well, liked. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, she could be a tramp? Trampoline. As That's pretty good. Shyly introduced himself as Chris, bounced atop Laura. She began to worry that he was just using her like all the others had. They'd all bounce too, and then they disappeared when her back was turned. Those guys sound like scumbags. Chris with his not so great jumping ability. I don't think he'd do that. I wonder if you can like make choices. Okay, that's pretty cool. Only the ominous pixel cloud ever remains, looking a little bigger and a little less hungry with every disappearing friend. I see that. With every bounce, Laura found herself less and less irritated by Chris. She started to miss him when he wasn't there. On another platform or something. Oh, wait. Chris was in love. She was perfect. He had to tell her so. At some point, he would definitely tell her. Probably best to wait for a moment the large, ominous pixel cloud wasn't about that. Yeah, probably best to wait. Where did Chris go? Wait, nothing happened.
Oh, there are different shades. Part of the problem, bounce on Laura 100 times. Chris was massively disappointed to run into the gang again. He'd enjoyed the alone time with his new girlfriend. to Laura as his girlfriend? Only if I say it out loud, he told himself. He didn't want to scare her off. Wait, I didn't complete this already? Alright, and this is where I need it for today. Because I am falling asleep midstream, and that's not a good thing. It's just like back in the God of War days. So, thank you everybody for joining me for today's stream. I hope you enjoyed it, although it was on the shorter side. It... I thought it was nice. We're going to do more of this another time, but thank you all. I hope you all have a good night's sleep, and uh, yeah, good night everybody. I'll see you again next time.